Good morning, YouTube. I hope you had a wonderful week with your students. This is the last week before my winter break, so I am so excited. It's going to be a jam-packed week full of activities to keep the kids engaged because I know around this time all teachers have a difficult time kind of helping the students focus. So today I am doing some Borax Crystal Snowflake ornaments with my students. I'm also doing a review with my AP. I want to talk to you a little bit more about how I I am incorporating multiple choice into my AP class, but this is great test prep for really any content area, any level of chemistry. So I will talk to you guys in a little bit because I have to get my stuff ready for the day, but I'll be sure to check in with you guys a little bit later on. I just finished with one of my CP classes and one of my AP classes, and I wanted to come on here and talk to you about the way I'm reviewing for my test in AP. And this is one of my most favorite things to do with them. And it is so simple and easy to do. And it just really, it's so cool because the kids have such powerful discussions when they're doing this activity. So one of the things that I am trying to work on personally as a teacher is trying to make sure that my students feel comfortable with all sets of questions. I find as an AP teacher, even as a CP teacher, my students are really focusing on open-ended questions. So I'm always asking them like to explain why all the time. And so they're losing the ability to reason during multiple choice questions because so many times every question that they're being asked is an open-ended type of scenario. And so what I've been trying to do, at least in the AP class, is spend more time looking at multiple choice questions. And so one of the ways that I'm doing that is using my textbook. I absolutely love the AP edition of the Zoom Doll textbook. What I've been doing at the end of the chapter, there are like these AP multiple choice questions. There's also AP FRQ questions. They're pretty good there, but um, the AP style multiple choice questions is what I'm using in order to get the students prepped for their test. And so what I do, whenever the students are going to take a test, I do something called multiple choice mania. And basically what I have around the classroom are a whole bunch of like cards. And so I stick these cards on these things called sticky clips. They look like this and they literally just hang on the wall. So I'll show you what one of them looks like and then I'll show you how they review with them. Here are some examples of the sticky clips. They're actually held on by wax. So you just push it onto the wall. And so the students, whenever they want to read a question, they simply just pull it down and they can read the question. So these are all around the classroom. They're on the lab benches. So for example, you can see I've got some questions here. And so they're all around. And so one of the nice things is that the students are up and moving and they have to find them. And so what I do is I put the multiple choice question on the actual card. And so the students will read the card, select the multiple choice answer that they believe to be correct. And then this little like QR code here, this QR code will tell them what the right answer is so that when they scan, it, they can just get what, you know, immediate feedback. And then if they didn't get the correct answer, they can ask me and I can help them. This has been so cool because I love like when the students come up to the lab station and they're like really trying to decide like what the answer is. They're having great conversations about it. And the fact that it's something that they can like hold on to is something that I think makes it a little bit more tangible for them. So they can all kind of gather around the cards and chat about the content on the cards. I've got about three more minutes before I have to set up for my next AP class so I am going to get ready for that but I will definitely check in with you guys a little bit later to let you know how the unit menu is going in CP this week and tell you how the rest of my multiple choice mania went today wanted to update you on how it's going in the CP class with the unit menu. So last week I told you that they're working on a covalent bonding unit menu and it was starting off pretty strong in the beginning, mostly because they've done the ionic. And so what I do in the first part of the menu is I kind of mix the ionic and covalent naming and formula writing together and covalent naming is pretty easy. But now that we're in Lewis structures, the students are really struggling. Um, they're really having a difficult time. I think a lot of it is due to the fact that they're just frankly not reading. They're skipping steps, you know, for how to draw Lewis structures. They're not paying attention or counting up the number of electrons. And I think part of it is, is that they're just, well, they're, they're tired because obviously we have break coming up. But also I think 
Um, they're just their attention to detail is really lacking, and I've noticed this a lot, um, especially in the last unit menu with ionic bonding. Like they're having a really hard time following a model, and I'm I'm really kind of unsure what what that is, and I don't know if it's because they're like rushing and just trying to get it done as fast as possible. I think that is probably the biggest thing. They think, okay, I'm I'm done with the menu, you know, when they are kind of losing sight of the fact that the menu is supposed to teach you the content, like these are the objectives that I'm teaching to. They're kind of losing sight of the fact that they need to, whatever they choose, that's supposed to teach them the content and then they have to apply the content. The plan for tomorrow is to do some whiteboarding. Um, they definitely need practice. I gave them a formative at the end of class today and it was not pretty, but that's why we do formatives, right? They tell the students what they don't know and there are quite a few students that don't know it. And so tomorrow is kind of like their built-in buffer day, give them time to just digest and get help and reflect on their formative assessment results. My whiteboard task list looks something like this. It's just, um, an eight and a half and a by 11 piece of paper and I just cut it in half so I have two task lists on either side. The task lists have identical molecules on it and basically it's just going to take them through whiteboarding all of the different molecules and then as they complete each one I just come by and I put my initials in there I check it off to let them know that they did successfully complete that one. So I think that's going to help the students make their thinking a little bit more visible and also help me to know you know who's still struggling after giving back the formative assessment from today. That is it for me this week. If you are celebrating Christmas, I just want to wish you a wonderful, merry, merry Christmas. I won't be recording any videos next week because I do want to rest and relax and enjoy my break. And obviously I won't be in school, but I will definitely be back uh, the first week of January. So you can look for another video from me. So Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Thank you so much for watching this channel and I'll see you guys very soon.